the Long Island Teen Challenge for uh, 10 months now. I came from uh, New England, uh, Haverhill, Massachusetts, born and raised. Uh, I came from a Christian home, a loving family, uh, raised on good values, good morals, went to church three times a week. Uh, when I got older and I got into middle school, uh, God blessed me with the skills to uh, play the drums. So from there I started playing the drums in the youth group band and it was amazing. It was so rewarding. Uh, I was very involved in the church at one point where I was actually going on a missions trip to Dominican Republic, uh, Santa Domingo, Dominican Republic, uh, for 10 days and it was the most rewarding thing I think I did at that time in my life. Um, so then I moved on to the high school time of my life and I started to graduate high school and from there, when you graduate high school at my church, you stop the youth group and from there I kind of fell out of hanging out with the right people, the good people, the positive people in my life who lifted each other up, lifted me up and so I still had a desire to play drums at that point, so uh, I looked everywhere I could to uh, in any avenue to play my to play drums, and I found uh, an opportunity to play drums with the punk rock band, uh, some guys I met in high school. We got really good, you know, we got really popular to the point where we uh, did an East Coast tour. So from there, you know, I realized uh, my hill, my my life was going downhill. I wasn't going where God wanted me to go, but I was going where I wanted to go, and the devil made it look so good, so enticing, you know, uh, rock and roll, the girls, the, uh, just the, the attention, the, uh, it was, I was like, I was being worshipped, and I was feeding off of it, you know, being a drummer in a band, it was amazing, uh, and just like any, any band or rock and roll usually comes with drugs and alcohol, and that's where I was introduced to marijuana, and I was, <laughs> I hit the ground running with that. I smoked all the time to the point where I thought I was just this happy-go-lucky hippie, you know. I was uh, celebrating 420 happy, wearing the clothes, talking a certain way. You know, I was even riding a scooter. I was riding a Vespa. I was like this really cool hipster guy. And uh, after a while, I realized as I got older that my life wasn't going anywhere. And so I had an opportunity to join the military, so I did. I joined the United States Navy. And it was amazing, to, uh, it was an amazing time, it was a good experience uh, to do that and to serve my country. However, it still didn't fix my life. I was still smoking marijuana, I was still doing cocaine, and even more now, I was drinking a lot uh, while I was in the military. Um, so after, after doing the military, I went on to come back home and I went nowhere. My life was going downhill. And, uh, I was just in and out of drug addiction, in and out of friends' homes, sleeping on couches, you know, uh, just relationships that were meaningless with girls, you know, that weren't going anywhere. And man, I thought, you know, I thought it was okay, but um, when I was I look back, I know I wasn't really anywhere. And uh, God was void in my life. Um, so I met this girl, and I ended up having a baby boy with her, Hunter. That's my son. Uh, I fell in love instantly, and uh, I knew that I had to do something with my life. And I decided to get my life back on track because I had a, a child to take care of. So I, I stopped doing drugs for the most part. Uh, and I signed up for college. I went to college for uh, multimedia, which is television production and uh, radio broadcasting. And uh, I was doing good for the time. And I was starting to have panic attacks and other things going on in my life mentally. Uh, so I got diagnosed with uh, some mental illnesses or whatnot, whatever the doctor and I was prescribed uh, tranquilizers, Klonopin and Xanax, so I got addicted to those. I got very dependent on those medications and it spiraled out of control. I started smoking marijuana again more and more and more and I started losing reality of hope and what was going on around me to the point where uh, I was paranoid all the time, I was having panic attacks, so that if I didn't have my medication, I just wasn't happy in person, I couldn't live, I could not function throughout the day. This spiraled downhill into another drug addiction. Of uh, When I was shooting a documentary on heroin, I actually got hurt, I was introduced to heroin. So I started to snort it, and I thought it was no thing a couple of times, and I was instantly addicted to this heroin. Um, and uh, I started to spend money on it, and one of my buddies, who I thought was a buddy, one of the guys I was sniffing heroin with, he said, you know, you should try shooting it. It's a lot more potent that way, you'll save your money. 
So I started intravenously shooting heroin and I started, you know, losing more sight of reality to the point where I got arrested for possession. I went to jail and in jail I had time to detox off the heroin and my prescription drugs, Xanax and Klonopin. So I detoxed and I, I joined a Bible study while I was in jail and uh, I thought, you know, I was going to be good. So, you know, in jail I was doing my devotion every day, Bible study every day. Uh, finally I was released from jail and I went home. And I probably read my Bible twice before I put it down and decided just to get involved back in life and do my own thing. I thought, you know, all right, I'm good now, so I, I don't need God. I don't need, you know, my daily devotion. I don't need to read my Bible. I don't need to surround myself with good people. Um, so I, I started my own business up with another friend of mine from high school. It was a multimedia business where we, uh, we took artists, we recorded them, you know, we produced their music. And my, my job was to do the videos, so I ran, you know, I hit the ground running, editing videos, doing music videos, doing commercials, and I was great at it, and I, I thought, all right, you know, I found my niche. This is what I'm going to do with my life. I'm going to be a video producer. I'm going to produce music videos and whatever, and I don't care, you know, what the music's about or nothing. It had no heart behind it. I didn't really care as long as I was able to do what I wanted to do, which was make music videos and make money doing it. I got wrapped back up in heroin again. I got introduced to the to this guy that I was doing heroin with before, and he, he went to jail actually also, and he was released from jail. And uh, I invited him over to come hang out at the studio one day. You know, he told me he was clean, so uh, I said, "All right, you know, you can come over and hang out." Uh, he came over, and I, I looked up from my computer to look up over at him, and he he had a needle in his hand, and I'm like, "Bro, what's going on?" He's like, "You know, it, it's it is what it is, bro." And I was a little weary about it. And then, you know, he injected the, the heroin, but he left a little bit left of the needle. And he's like, uh, and he waved in front of my hand. He's like, I know, I know you miss it. And I stopped and I thought, I'm like, yeah, I just missed a feeling, you know. Uh, so I, I allowed him to inject me with the heroin. And that was it. It was like the first time. It was like, you know, your first love. I fell in love with it again immediately. And there was no hesitation the very next day I was spending my paycheck and all my money on heroin and all I spent money on was heroin and, and it was bad so one day I was actually picking up heroin with him dealing heroin with him and uh, we were sitting in a McDonald's parking lot we were sitting in a McDonald's parking lot and uh, we were loading up our needles and I was ready to put the needle in my arm and I did I was putting it, but I didn't squeeze the plunger yet. And something told me to look up and look to the left. And when I did, I saw this blacked out Ford car. And it had red and blue lights and it was rushing at us. And I inst instantly knew we were caught. I pushed the plunger, got high. As I went to go unbuckle my seatbelt to run out of the car and try to run and hide from the, the police, uh, my right side passenger window smashed. And it was the uh, police, they smashed the window and dragged me right through the window where I was arrested and uh, we were caught up in a ring, a drug ring, uh, a drug bust where they were, they found 147 grams of heroin, two unregistered um, firearms and heroin on me and heroin on him and we were in the school zone and it was troubling. Uh, for my arrest it made the paper so a lot of everybody knew, it was all over Facebook, it was all over the internet and I was introduced to Teen Challenge through North Point Bible College in Bradford, Massachusetts, where I was doing some community service for my first time in jail. And they sent me there, they referred me to there, and I came to Teen Challenge running because I knew I needed a change in my life. Since I've been here, it's been a total transformation, a total 180. Um, I'm go not going back to the stink I was in before, but actually starting a new life, a new path, a new road with Jesus Christ in my life. I am no longer addicted to heroin. I am no longer dependent on Xanax or Klonopin to sleep at night and to not be, it's to be happy in my life. I'm happy with God and what he's done for me and the gifts that he has blessed me with. And not only that, but just to be here at Teen Challenge and surrounded by good people, people who actually love you, who actually are concerned for you. They're not trying to get a one up on you, but they're actually trying to pick you up. And that's what they do here. They restore lives, they redeem lives as a footstool for Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ is, is the center of, of our <clears throat> of our focus here and uh, I've been educated, I've been blessed to work the media department here at Long Island Teen Challenge and in a 
couple more months I will graduate and I pray that I'll be able to go on and to serve God wholeheartedly here through this ministry, through media. And he just gives me such a passion and such a zeal for serving his ministry through video and through audio and actually recently even through just ministering to other brothers who need help. And I'm just so excited to see what God has for me in the future. I, I thank Long Island Teen Challenge and I thank God, especially God, for what he's done in my life. And if it wasn't for me coming back to coming to Teen Challenge and coming back to a life with Jesus Christ, then I would probably be dead. 